that, you know, how many times does it happen where the first few words of a sentence come out and you go, oh, never mind. I mean, I can tell. And sometimes it doesn't even take the first few words. It's like, I see the... Oh. <laughs> it's, it's that quick of a monitoring. I mean, you can you see it. And, and that's great because that's being aware of those thoughts. You are not just passively condoning mind wandering, that, I'm, that you're going to be some sleepwalking little person, that you are watching thoughts. I mean, that's a symbol of, of watching thoughts. When, when you s seem to ca catch your words, it really is really you're just watching the thoughts. You're unplugging the ego. Is the, is the ego. <laughs> it seems to be right there in the thought. Never mind. No point in finishing. No point in giving energy to even finishing a, a thought or finishing a sentence because it's pointless. So, I mean, again, that what you, the conclusion you've arrived at is there. I must not be ready, or there must be. I must have an investment in a false belief system to not experience it now. Good. That's a, that gives you an impetus to question. If you have this sense that it's available right now, and yet there's something that's holding me back from experiencing it right now, then, wow! Question. I mean, there's something to look at. Question. That's why. That's the value of of questioning. That's the value for me. It seemed for me when I was reading the course that. I sensed I had these beliefs, but I wasn't even aware of what the beliefs were. So I did one day, I did a search in the, in the course on belief. Specifics. You know? Oh my. Belief in levels. Belief in time. Belief in space. Belief that what is amiss on one level can affect another level. I was just, I just did little snippets. And I was like, hmm, it's nice to have, just look at them all. Look not to time, but to the little space between you still to be delivered from. And do not let it be disguised as time and so preserved, because its form is changed and what it is cannot be recognized. The Holy Spirit's purpose now is yours. Should not his happiness be yours as well? Do not let it be disguised as time. You know, it seems as if all problems that are within this world have to do with time. You know, whether it's paying off debts or whether it's resolving this issue and with my wife and, and moving towards becoming a mystic or a teacher of God or whatever, it seems like there's some time involved there. And when there's an upset that comes about it, like a strain of even thinking about it, about it, how is, how is this ever going to work out? Mm -hmm. Nothing I've ever seen in my past, Jesus, has ever showed me that I should have confidence <laughs> that this is going to work out, because the past hasn't seemed to always work out. There seems to, the past seems to be fraught with pain and with, with upset. Even the recent past, <laughs> like this morning or yesterday or whatever. And so, he's just saying, whenever you're upset, Look not to time. Don't let time disguise it or be the preserver of it. But be open to the, the present correction that is always available. It seems to be a tracing back, be only because there's a belief in linear time, but the whole idea of tracing back falls away. You know, when you just can see the falsity of the ego, that's where the, the, the flat line, or that's where the constant joy and peace come in. Because you just don't first buy the bait and then have to trace it back <laughs> and say, oops. <laughs> but you don't buy the bait. 